Chapter Three of The Red and the Black, Volume One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Red and the Black, Volume One, by Stendhal. Translated by Horace B. Samuel. Chapter Three The Poor Fund. A virtuous curé who does not intrigue is a providence for the village. Fleury. It should be mentioned that the curé of Verrieres, an old man of ninety, who owed to the bracing mountain air an iron constitution and an iron character, had the right to visit the prison, the hospital, and the workhouse at any hour. It had been at precisely six o'clock in the morning that Monsieur Appert, who had a Paris recommendation to the curé, had been shrewd enough to arrive at a little inquisitive town. He had immediately gone on to the curé's house. The curé Chélan became pensive as he read the letter written to him by the Monsieur le Marquis de la Mole, peer of France, and the richest landed proprietor of the province. "'I am old and beloved here,' he said to himself in a whisper. "'They would not dare!' Then he suddenly turned to the gentleman from Paris with eyes which, in spite of his great age, shone with that sacred fire which betokens the delight of doing a fine but slightly dangerous act come with me sir he said but please do not express any opinion of the things which we shall see in the presence of the jailer and above all not in the presence of the superintendents of the workhouse monsieur appert realized that he had to do with a man of spirit he followed the venerable cure visited the hospital and workhouse put a lot of questions but in spite of somewhat extraordinary answers did not indulge in the slightest expression of censure this visit lasted several hours the curé invited monsieur appert to dine but the latter made the excuse of having some letters to write as a matter of fact he did not wish to compromise his generous companion to any further extent about three o'clock these gentlemen went to finish their inspection of the workhouse and then returned to the prison there they found the jailer by the gate a kind of giant six feet high with bow legs his ignoble face had become hideous by reason of his terror ah monsieur he said to the cure as soon as he saw him is not the gentleman whom i see there monsieur appert what does that matter said the cure the reason is that i received yesterday the most specific orders and monsieur the prefect sent a message by a gendarme who must have galloped during the whole of the night that monsieur appert was not to be allowed in the prisons i can tell you monsieur noirud said the cure that the traveller who is with me is monsieur appert but do you or do you not admit that i have the right to enter the prison at any hour of the day or night accompanied by anybody i choose yes monsieur the cure said the jailer in a low voice lowering his head like a bulldog induced to a grudging obedience by fear of the stick only monsieur the cure i have a wife and children and shall be turned out if they inform against me i only have my place to live on i too should be sorry enough to lose mine answered the good cure with increasing emotion in his voice what a difference answered the jailer keenly as for you monsieur le cure we all know that you have eight hundred francs a year good solid money such were the facts which commented upon and exaggerated in twenty different ways had been agitating for the last two days all the odious passions of the little town of verrieres at the present time they served as the text for the little discussion which monsieur de renal was having with his wife he had visited the cure earlier in the morning accompanied by monsieur valenod the director of the workhouse in order to convey their most emphatic displeasure monsieur chelan had no protector and felt all the weight of their words well gentlemen i shall be the third cure of eighty years of age who has been turned out in this district i have been here for fifty-six years i have baptized nearly all the inhabitants of the town which was only a hamlet when i came to it every day i marry young people whose grandparents i have married in days gone by verrieres is my family but i said to myself when i saw the stranger this man from paris may as a matter of fact be a liberal there are only too many of them about but what harm can he do to our poor and to our prisoners the reproaches of monsieur de renal and above all those of monsieur valenod the director of the workhouse became more and more animated well gentlemen turn me out then the old cure exclaimed in a trembling voice i shall still continue to live in the district 
as you know i inherited forty-eight years ago a piece of land that brings in eight hundred francs a year i shall live on that income i do not save anything out of my living gentlemen and that is perhaps why when you talk to me about it i am not particularly frightened monsieur de renal always got on very well with his wife but he did not know what to answer when she timidly repeated the phrase of monsieur le cure what harm can this paris gentleman do the prisoners he was on the point of quite losing his temper when she gave a cry her second son had mounted the parapet of the terrace wall and was running along it although the wall was raised to a height of more than twenty feet above the vineyard on the other side the fear of frightening her son and making him fall prevented madame de renal speaking to him but at last the child who was smiling at his own pluck looked at his mother saw her pallor jumped down on the walk and ran to her he was well scolded this little event changed the course of the conversation i really mean to take sorel the son of the sawyer into the house said monsieur de renal he will look after the children who are getting too naughty for us to manage he is a young priest or as good as one a good latin scholar and will make the children get on according to the cure he has a steady character i will give him three hundred francs a year and his board i have some doubts as to his morality for he used to be the favorite of that old surgeon major member of the legion of honor who went to board with the sorels on the pretext that he was their cousin it is quite possible that that man was really simply a secret agent of the liberals he said that the mountain air did his asthma good but that is something which has never been proved he has gone through all bonaparte's campaigns in italy and had even it was said voted against the empire in the plebiscite this liberal taught the sorel boy latin and left him a number of books which he had brought with him of course in the ordinary way i should have never thought of allowing a carpenter's son to come into contact with our children but the curé told me the very day before the scene which has just estranged us forever that sorel had been studying theology for three years with the intention of entering a seminary he is consequently not a liberal and he certainly is a good latin scholar this arrangement will be convenient in more than one way continued monsieur de renal looking at his wife with a diplomatic air that valenod is proud enough of his two fine norman horses which he has just bought for his carriage but he hasn't a tutor for his children he might take this one away from us you approve of my plan then said monsieur de renal thanking his wife with a smile for the excellent idea which she had just had well that's settled good gracious my dear how quickly you make up your mind it is because i'm a man of character as the cure found out right enough don't let us deceive ourselves we are surrounded by liberals in this place all those cloth merchants are jealous of me i am certain of it two or three are becoming rich men well i should rather fancy it for them to see monsieur de renal's children pass along their street as they go out for their walk escorted by their tutor it will impress people my grandfather often used to tell us that he had a tutor when he was young it may run me into a hundred crowns but that ought to be looked upon as an expense necessary for keeping up our position this sudden resolution left madame de renal quite pensive she was a big well-made woman who had been the beauty of the country to use the local expression she had a certain air of simplicity and youthfulness in her deportment this naive grace with its innocence and its vivacity might even have recalled to a parisian some suggestion of the sweets he had left behind him if she had realized this particular phase of her success madame de renal would have been quite ashamed of it all coquetry all affectation were absolutely alien to her temperament monsieur valenod the rich director of the workhouse had the reputation of having paid her court a fact which had cast a singular glamour over her virtue for this monsieur valenod a big young man with a square sturdy frame florid face and big black whiskers was one of those coarse blustering and noisy people who pass in the provinces for a fine man madame de renal who had a very shy and apparently a very uneven temperament was particularly shocked by monsieur valenod's lack of repose and by his boisterous loudness her aloofness from what in the verrieres jargon was called having a good time had earned her the reputation of being very proud of her birth in fact she never thought about it but she had been extremely glad to find the inhabitants of the town visit her less frequently we shall not deny that she passed for a fool in the eyes of their good ladies because she did not wheedle her husband and allowed herself to miss the most splendid opportunities of getting fine hats from paris or besançon 
Provided she was allowed to wander in her beautiful garden, she never complained. She was a naive soul who had never educated herself up to the point of judging her husband and confessing to herself that he bored her. She supposed, without actually formulating the thought, that there was no greater sweetness in the relationship between husband and wife than she herself had experienced. She loved Monsieur de Renal most when he talked about his projects for their children. The elder he had destined for the army, the second for the law, and the third for the church. To sum up, she found Monsieur de Renal much less boring than all the other men of her acquaintance. This conjugal opinion was quite sound. The mayor of Verrieres had a reputation for wit, and above all, a reputation for good form, on the strength of half a dozen chestnuts which he had inherited from an uncle. Old Captain de Renal had served before the Revolution in the infantry regiment of Monsieur the Duke of Orleans, and was admitted to the Prince's salons when he went to Paris. He had seen Madame de Montesson, the famous Madame de Genlis, Monsieur Ducre, the inventor, of the Palais Royal. These personages would crop up only too frequently in Monsieur de Renal's anecdotes. He found it, however, more and more of a strain to remember stories which required such delicacy in the telling, and for some time past it had only been on great occasions that he would trot out his anecdotes concerning the House of Orleans. As, moreover, he was extremely polite, except on money matters, he passed, and justly so, for the most aristocratic personage in Verrieres. End of chapter 3